Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So on Friday, TechSpot went ahead and put up an article with comparing the Ryzen 5 1600 versus the Core i7-7800X. These are both 6-core, 12-thread CPUs. And it's pretty interesting, the results that Steve went ahead and was able to pull from this. Now you can go ahead and check out the article in the description below. I also linked the Hardware Unboxed, which is Steve's YouTube channel. Uh, where he goes over this if you'd rather watch the video versus reading the article. But let's go ahead and just check out a couple of the key highlights here. Now, what's really interesting about this particular test is Steve uses 30 different games for gaming testing. He doesn't just use 4 or 8 or 10 games, he uses 30. And this gives us a very good overview of how these CPUs perform in the market. Now, this isn't anything special. We've seen Ryzen versus uh, Sky Lake X and Cabby Lake benchmarks all over the place. But in this one, Steve's using the GTX 1080 Ti versus a regular 1080 that some people use. And this, is, of course, is being tested at 1080p to try to stress the CPU as much as possible. But as I was saying, the interesting part on this one is really ultimately down to the results. So we're just going to kind of skip to the end here and just look straight at the results because I found this very surprising. Now, it's been a few months since Ryzen launched. Skylake X is still a bit new, but Cappy Lake's been around for a long time, and it looks like things are starting to change. First off, let's take a look at the power consumption. Now, in all honesty, being a hardware enthusiast, only the overclock numbers really are important to me. But looking at the stock clocks, they're all pretty even. The Ryzen CPU, of course, is much lower, but it also runs a lot lower clocked. So that makes a lot of sense that its power draw would be lower, even though the 7700K on idle is a little bit less than the Ryzen 5 1600. But the Ryzen 5 is vastly superior, much lower power draw compared to that of the 7800X. And then looking at the overclocks, it's kind of a mirror story. The 7800X is much, much higher on the power draw at 4.7 gigahertz than the Ryzen 5 1600 at only 4 gigahertz. Now, granted, these are stable overclocks. That's the reason why Steve used these. The i7-7700K at 4.9 gigahertz at only 65 watts at idle is still pretty good, so that's not bad. And its power draw is only a little bit higher than that of the 6-core Ryzen CPU. Although it is missing two cores, it is running nearly a gigahertz higher. Not really anything surprising here. Ryzen is definitely a very efficient architecture as far as power consumption goes. But let's take a look at the results that he found on his gaming benchmarks. Now this chart here is a very simple way to kind of get an overall picture of what's going on. He has two charts. This one right here is the 30 game average. What's really interesting to see is that the Ryzen 5 1600 at only 4 gigahertz matches the Core i7-7800X at 4.7 gigahertz. Now we're talking much lower power draw and equivalent performance in gaming. What's even more interesting is if we compare it to a nearly 5 gigahertz 7700K, the 4 gigahertz Ryzen 5 1600 is only 9% slower on average. And this is with a 25% performance deficit in clock speed, or nearly 25%. Now we're talking really, really small gains considering we're talking about such a huge clock increase. So what does this really mean? This means that Ryzen is slowly becoming much, much more competitive with Intel. Even the 7700K is just barely better. And the only reason why it is, is because of its clock frequency. Now this chart here that Steve put up is pretty much the best thing that he's ever done. He's done this on a few different articles, but it clearly shows where the 1600 has an advantage and where it has a disadvantage. And if you look at this list, there's about equal amount of games that have an advantage on the Ryzen CPU versus the 7800X and the ones that are disadvantaged. But at the end of the day, the overall numbers show that they're virtually identical. Now you have to remember that the 7800X during this testing is clocked at 4.7 gigahertz. That is 700 megahertz faster than the Ryzen CPU and that is nearly 20% higher. Now, if we go ahead and look at this chart again on Guru 3D, this is really starting to come into effect. This was done on their 7900X review where they went ahead and tested just a single core from each CPU running at 4.2 gigahertz using CPU Z's internal benchmark. And this is just a simple IPC test. This was very interesting when I first saw this, but it seems like this is starting to translate over to gaming now. Now that games and the Ryzen platform is becoming more mature, 
Uh, the performance advantage of Ryzen is starting to translate over into the gaming market the same way that it has in productivity. But as you can see, the Ryzen CPUs are in the lead over all Intel CPUs. This includes the mighty Kaby Lake. This includes Haswell and Skylake E. Uh, this includes their entire lineup of architectures. And Ryzen is, you know, right there. It's on the top. Now, granted, it's not by a lot. But what's interesting is, is clearly clock for clock, Ryzen and AMD are now superior. Really interesting is, is when you take a look at things more objectively, when you look at the performance per dollar, Ryzen is chart topping. Performance per watt, chart topping. So what does this really all come out to be? Like, like why is this important? What's really interesting, like I said, when I was showing you the TechSpot article, is that in gaming, gaming is really the only area where Ryzen kind of struggle. In productivity workloads, it's always been amazing. It's always been greater than or equal to its Intel counterparts. And it looks like things are just getting better and better, especially on the gaming front, because that gap that was there during the Ryzen 7 1800X launch, where we would see 20, 30% differences between the 7700K and the 1800X are clearly being dissolved over time with software updates and motherboard updates from AMD. So anybody out there that's been sitting on the fence thinking, okay, let me wait for Coffee Lake or let me go ahead and get the X299 because I want a six core 12 thread CPU. Honestly, if gaming is one of your primary focuses, you are simply just wasting your money. And speaking about Coffee Lake, we're looking at the Ryzen 5 1600, which is usually had for about $200, sometimes even less. And that's going to be competing against the Coffee Lake 6 core 6 thread CPU. So if you do mostly gaming and any sort of productivity, the Ryzen CPU will still be better for you because it will be much faster in productivity, maybe just a little bit slower in gaming. Coffee Lake will not have better IPC over Cabby Lake. It, at best, it will be the same and more than likely it won't clock as high because it has more cores and it's thermal overhead and problems with that will start to rear its head. Now, that's just subjective. That's my opinion. Until we see them, we don't know for sure. But because we're still on the 14 nanometer process, it doesn't seem like it's going to be some revolutionary piece of technology. Cannon Lake is supposed to be a revamp architecture. That'll be on 10 nanometers, and that should be out next year sometime. And that might change the game a little bit, but then you're looking at Ryzen 2 or Ryzen Plus or whatever they want to call it at that particular point. But the whole point of this particular video is if you're on the fence and you're like, okay, well, I want something that's really good at gaming and I don't care that much about productivity, so I'm just going to stick with Intel. It looks like that's not really worth it anymore. As you can tell, for only 9% slower than the 7700K at 5 gigahertz, a $200 Ryzen CPU will be able to keep up. Yes, you lose 9% if you're using a GTX 1080 Ti and you're playing at 1080p is pretty unlikely. I don't know too many people buying GTX 1080 Ti's for 1080p gaming. And if you are, you're really not taking advantage of your GPU. So this is kind of like worst case scenario. If you have a GTX 1070, you're not going to notice the difference anyway. And then comparing the 7700K versus the uh, Ryzen 5, first off, it's $100 more. And the Ryzen 5 has two more cores, four more threads, and is better at productivity. And your performance will be identical. With a GTX 1070 at 1080p, there's not going to be any difference because the GPU is not powerful enough to push the CPUs. Now, as far as the X299 goes, that is just completely off the table for gamers. There's simply no reason at all to consider that platform. So I would just forget about that. Coffee Lake will be out here shortly. That should be somewhat more competitive. Uh, but at this particular point, with those numbers right there, Steve does a very good job. I reference him a lot. I always talk about TechSpot because I really like the way that he does his testing. He doesn't just do a few games. He does a ton of them. And you get a holistic picture of the market out there right now. Sure, some games aren't going to be as good, and then some games will be better. But as you saw across basically the 30 most popular games over the past few years, it just washes out. It just balances out at the end of the day. So anybody that's holding out out there, time to forget about the IPC wars because that's pretty much over. As far as I'm concerned, AMD has brought Ryzen to where we all wanted it to be day one. It took a few months. That's not the end of the world. This is a fantastic product. AMD has done great. I have a 1700 right here and on my quad core 2600K that I had previously, that would bottleneck occasionally. And I always assume it's some background task kicking in 
and my GPU usage will just dip randomly. Uh, I haven't had a single problem or incident of that with the i7-1700, so it's a much smoother experience. So I can say it personally, firsthand, that this is definitely a great product. And honestly, there's just no reason for waiting. Save yourself some money. The Ryzen 5 1600 is hands down the best gaming CPU you can buy for the money right now. If you don't like overclocking or you don't feel comfortable with that, spend a few dollars more, get the 1600X. With XFR, it'll pretty much get you to where your overclocking is going to get you anyway, as long as you have a decent cooler. So, well, all right, guys, I know this isn't any new information. This is just kind of an update from where we all thought Ryzen was, you know, because of all the benchmarks that launched. There's not a lot of people keeping up with benchmarks over time. And uh, I think Steve's getting ready for the Ryzen 3, and that's why he went ahead and posted this. But these are very interesting results because this is a lot better than I thought that AMD would be at at this early stage. So they're doing very well there. Well, alrighty, guys, if you like this kind of video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. And if you really want to help us out, please consider becoming a patron. Uh, we're going ahead and buying a lot more hardware and doing some testing. I have the benchmarks complete for the GTX, uh, or actually the Pascal versus Maxwell GPC testing. I'm going to go ahead and get that together for you guys a little bit later on this week. So stay on the lookout for that. And I will catch you guys in the next video.